So we had a look at the for loop, but there's another loop built in. Actually, there are two other loops, but one loop is something I'll have a look at when we talk about objects. The other loop I want to talk about right now is the while loop. The while loop works like this. I set a variable, let's say number equal to five. And then I want to create a while loop with the while keyword and then parentheses. Now between the parentheses here, I specify the condition which defines how long this loop will keep running. So you can read this like, while this condition here is true, I will execute the code between the curly braces. So as a condition here, I'll specify that number should be smaller than seven. Inside this loop, I'll log number and I will increase number by one. So it is kind of like this for loop I created a couple of minutes ago, but well, written in a different way. What do you think happens if I hit run? I get five and six because well, currently it's five, I print five, it gets incremented, so it's six, which is still smaller than seven, I print six, it gets incremented to seven, which is no longer smaller than seven, therefore we quit the loop. So you might think, okay, that's just another way to write what we already learned. Well, that is just one example, of course. You not only can check if something is smaller than something else, but you might check some condition and you might set condition inside this loop, well, conditionally, depending on something else. So while really is a generic loop, which you can use to check any condition you might have to keep running until a condition is fulfilled or is no longer fulfilled to be precise. So until this is no longer true. For example, if you write while true and don't execute this, you would write an infinite loop here because this will never get changed. It's always true. This loop will keep running, which certainly is not what you want. Of course, you can combine multiple control structures here. I'm setting condition to true here and I'll use condition inside here. Next, I'll also create another variable called i, which I set to two. And inside this condition here, I'll check if i equals three. If this is the case, I'll set condition to false. Otherwise, I'll print i and I'll increment i thereafter. What do you think we'll get if I hit run? Well, we got two and three. Two is the starting value, of course. And then we increment it to three which is when we set condition to false, but we're not instantly skipping out of this loop, of course, we're just setting condition to false, we still execute this code, but then when we reach the next iteration, we again checked condition and as it was set to false, now the loop is finished. Now, sometimes you also do have a case where your initial condition might be false right from the beginning, but you would nonetheless want to execute at least one iteration of the loop. So for example, if I set condition to false and I get rid of all the other stuff here, and I write log executed here, what do you think I'll see? Nothing of course, because condition is set to false. But let's say condition is not hard coded to false, but instead set through your program and it might be true. And nonetheless, not depending on its value, you want to at least execute the code here at least once. For this case, we got another loop, the do while loop. And it's basically the while loop, but we add another keyword, do, then curly braces, and then the while condition at the end followed by a semicolon. So we still use this while condition, but we specify that we want to execute this code anyways. So even if it is false right from the beginning. So if I now hit run, we see executed, even though the condition is false. We only see it getting executed once, but this one time, is executed at least, which is what the do keyword here allows us to do.
So that has been control structures, if statement, switch statement, for loop, and while loop, and how you can combine them, how you can control them with break and continue, and setting the conditions for the while loop, for example. Control structures are very important and allow you to change the flow of code execution or also, of course, dependently execute some code, which is something you'll probably need in most of your applications.